coming down here to where the munition buildings are, where the railway was. <laughs> There's a little doghouse. That's be good or bad. I don't think the puppy dog is home. Again, I keep walking on one of the German roads. Clearly. There. More munition buildings that look like they've been repaired post-war. See the power plant down there. Here's foundations from a big building. One of the mines is up there. Another, looks like a loading dock. These should have been the storage buildings for the munitions. Of all the things that I have no doubt of is that Munitions were produced here, stored here, and shipped from here. Of that, I have no doubt. It's nice to know that you know one thing about something like this. The row of munition buildings down here look incredibly similar to the ones up on the hill. And this one looks exactly like a railroad loading bay. This does look like a rail loading building. And there you have one of the other mining buildings and another building. Again, trees on top, wartime camouflage. And all of them are in use today, which makes perfect sense and obviously for what we're looking for there's nothing in them all of that would have long gone but the structures are here giving testimony to this was a very large munition plant and here these hollowed out cement slabs with access for what looks like cabling wiring sewage I've seen in a lot of places that the Germans built during the war. The red brick building could be newer. But this definitely does look like a loading dock. I would imagine trucks could be pulling in here, unloading on the other side, you'd have the trail track, train tracks. On the other side, you'd have the train tracks. where you could load the trains with the munitions. And since somebody left the door open, that is an invitation, is it not? appreciate the effort, but I think it's been a while since there's been the train here. Another one of the old mining buildings up here. Yep. And on the other side of this building, as I suspected, is the loading ramp. Years ago, this was just full of trains, activity, rail lines, coal trains, and 
I'm actually walking on train tracks. Here are the actual train tracks. Lots of train tracks. Two sets there. I'm standing on some here. There are two sets of tracks there. It's been a long time since trains have been here. But this was full of rail. And since there is a train intersection with a somewhat of a stop sign, it may have been active longer than I thought. And down there you see the power plant. All of this has been cleared. All of this would have just have been a huge train station leading down to the power plant. Way before the war ever got here. There were a rail here from the late 18th centuries, and the buildings surrounding, surrounding us here are the mining buildings, administration, and the trail, the rail will run that way. So you're in a valley, you have lots of foliage, you have a lot of rail, you have power and electricity, not a bad place to put a munition plant. And of course, that way around the hill, is the labor camp, the rail loading docks, coming down to smaller storage buildings. Let's see what they contain. Lots of water from what I can see from where I'm standing. Lots of mud today. With no race whatsoever. Well, I will say they left the door open. That is, as I have always said, an invitation. And a little technical tunnel here. It is also full of water. This is literally just one large room. steel frame door and a very small room and of course there are tires everywhere because anything to do with World War II bunkers or buildings seems to be destined for storage of old tires. Oh, son of a bitch! Didn't I just say there was a technical tunnel? Oh well. And that's what it sounds like when uh, you step in a hole. This is just a room. It is just a room. But this is constructed exactly like the others all the other storage buildings. Now given the amount of munition storage here was, it must have produced quite a bit. It's hard to date that building. Or what's left of it. Lots and lots and lots of buildings here as well. A little chimney. And you see how these buildings 
look exactly like they do up on the road above the hinge. All munition storage manufacturing. Camouflage on the roof. Large building, don't know what it was. Up here is the hinge, the munitions plant, and here's the remaining wall of the power plant. Old beautiful building. And the rail would extend all the way down here. Now there's a very specific reason why we're down here. Because we're looking for a hole in the wall. Literally. And Lord knows there's enough of those. But I don't know if the one we're looking for is here anymore. That wall could have come down. It's very hard to see what remains left. There's a couple of covers here. Holes in the ground, stinks of sewage. There probably are, and the wall up to the hinge, which is up here. So let's go see if we can find what it is I'm looking for. And I will explain what that is and why that is of interest. And here inside one of the old munition buildings, before you get any ideas that these technical tunnels just run in here to supply them with power, these are far higher up than the tunnels I found and the ones running under the hinge. These are shallow technical tunnels and this is one of the rooms where munitions were made. So the tunnels that run through to all these buildings runs deeper. And the cross tunnels, depending how long they are, would run into the mountain. And we are back to, and one of the guys that, uh, that runs, uh, and one of the guys that runs the Molka Museum, one of the guys, he confirmed that Nobel had underground manufacturing of some sort and that's where they had repurposed the technical tunnels to run to. So that means we're back to the question why did a munition factory need underground tunnels? They're, they have these big buildings for any kind of conventional weaponry I hope some of the documentation I have will bring us some more answers because my question, why is high power voltage being run into tunnels into the mountain? And why did the Germans build a new head building if they were not mining? And mining stopped in 39 and that building not there in 39. Whoa, okay. That's a little... Okay, that's quite deep. That's a good five, six feet deep. Which brings us to watch where you're going. All the white munition buildings, of course they were supplied with electricity. 
but not this way and not that much. And the road leading down that you've seen before. There's more of the munition buildings. See how they were tied together with the hooks, camouflage. And this row of building just continues. They're not quite the same as the ones running by the railroad. They're not quite this. They're not quite the same type and strength as the ones running by the railroad line. Except for they are lined up like uh, pearls on a string, just like these in one long row, just as long as the line of houses down by the railroad line. But again, fairly thick, reinforced, lots and lots of camouflage. Down here, a gatehouse that's collapsed, as you saw last time I was here. And this is the guard building that stands before the road leading up to the other munition buildings. And it once had some nice tile on it, I can tell. We were in here last time, so not really gonna make anything out of it. Just a little guard shed. Control who drives in and out. And down here are the other munition buildings that we've also seen last time I was here. See classical roads, the way the Germans made them. And here are these buildings. There's an additional row of large manufacturing buildings like these. Why wouldn't there be? This is large enough to be a loading building. Certainly large enough for trucks to dive through. More buildings lined up down there. Oh yes, this was what I deemed to be the motor pool. Also, the walls are not collapsible in one direction. They are not weakened. So, motor pool. There are the other munition buildings. And there are more. And I was in all of these last time I was here. I just wanted to remind you where everything was. These are the manufacturing manu these are the buildings where munitions were produced right down there with the walls that would collapse this way. So I guess if they have an accident, they would blow up the motor pool. Huh? Who am I to judge? Years ago, this was just full of trains, activity, rail lines, coal trains. And I'm afraid that when I come back here, I don't think the factory will be standing anymore. the munitions plant and here's the remaining wall of the power plant all beautiful building 
and the rail would extend all the way down here. Now there's a very specific reason why we're down here. Because we're looking for a hole in the wall. Literally. And Lord knows there's enough of those. But I don't know if the one we're looking for is here anymore. That wall could have come down. It's very hard to see what remains left. There's a couple of covers here. Holes in the ground, stinks of sewage. There's probably are, and a wall up to the hinge, which is up here. So let's go see if we can find what it is I'm looking for. And I will explain what that is and why that is of interest. And while I'm here, I want to document this building because I'm afraid that when I return next time, there may not be another chance since it's coming down day by day. This could have been the bottom, the foundation of the conveyor belt running up to the top of the hill overlooking everything. I'm hoping that the boiler room is behind this wall. Clearly it's part of the old building. Arches, beautiful structures. This has not fallen down. I think this was a slide where something could come down from the conveyor belt. I need to follow the wall here. Probably, probably be safe to do it on the inside. Hang on, regrouping. That round bricked up hole in the wall. Could be one I'm looking for, but I'm looking for two. Don't know what all this caution stuff is for. But as you can imagine, I'm walking very, very carefully. Underneath. Another coal feeder. This could be the boiler room I'm standing in. Which means the coal would be fed in here. Which means the building I'm looking for, or the wall I'm looking for, is no more. I need to get on the other side of this caution tape without killing myself. So, regrouping. Be right back. But here you clearly see the height difference. The hinge is up there. Then there is this dip. And then you have the factory coming down here. Now, if you're going to put a cooling tower, why would you put it in a place where you had to pump the water up into? Of course, gravity would bring it back. But still, indications are that the cooling tower was built early on throughout the time of the war. And here's what I'm looking for. Um, but not put in use. Because if it was put in use, well, what would need cooling? Here are the two holes I wanted to show you. And of course, you are now asking yourselves, why are these two holes important? Let me explain. The two holes you see up behind me leads into the boiler room of the power plant. That's important because straight that way behind camera is the hinge, the cooling tower, 
Those are the two pipes that would lead water straight in the direction of the hinge. This is where the water that would need cooling would go out through these two holes in pipes, elevated pipes, straight up to the hinge, into the cool, into the pond, into the cooling pond underneath the hinge. That's where the water would go, come and go. So, hinge, cooling tower, access to the factory, to the boiler room, makes sense. Elevated platform right here. However, that makes it interesting. They did not modernize the power plant during the war, but they built an enormous cooling tower. There already were several cooling towers, one down there, one over here. We have pictures of, we know where they are, or were. Why would you build a large cooling tower for an existing power plant, make access to it, unless you needed something more cooled than just from the power plant that was already existing and running on the existing cooling tower. What makes it even more interesting is we now have photos that are indicating that cooling hoses would run to, for instance, the Walther mine shaft down here. So if you have a hinge that is a cooling tower or was supposed to be a cooling tower, to the point where you laid infrastructure for cooling hoses to the factory, to the power plant, but also to the mine shafts. Why on earth are you running cooling tubes to mine shafts? Technical tunnels to the munition plant, I understand. Technical tunnels with electricity to the munition plant, I get it. Cooling tubes to a closed mine shaft. That's all disappeared really quickly after the war. That I do not understand. Right there is a little arch above which are the two holes. If you travel right behind me, right up there above the wall is what remains of a pillar, support pillar, that would have or could have held those pipes. It has broken off since and is laying on its side, but that support pillar would have held the two pipes that would have run right above the wall into under where the hinge is, which is right on the other side of this. So there is the support pillar for the pipes. Now at least now we, I am as certain as I can be that infrastructure was created for pipes to run from the factory to the henge. Henge, this scenario being a cooling tower, that we have ample evidence and certainly pictures that indicates it is. Now the second step of this evolution is, were there pipes leading from the henge into the Walter Shaft's new head building that's pretty much gone and destroyed because I'm seeing two shafts up there that both have been labeled as the Walter shaft and that's not really possible and here see this part of the wall where the supports for the conveyor belt behind this tree sorry that leads up to the factory and up to the top of the hill that was built into the wall because that conveyor belt was much, much older than the new attachment down here for the pipes leading up to the hinge. The, they, these were actually built into the retaining wall. And above that you see another pillar for that conveyor belt that then follows all the way up to the top of the mountain. I am glad this wall is still here and I'm very glad I actually got to be able to take photos of these because sooner or later this will come down and there'll be no more. But in here is the boiler room. And you can see this was a, was a beautiful ornate building. But you can certainly also see that these are the beautiful ornate building windows, the arches from back in the day when it was constructed. And then you look up on these holes they were literally gouged out of the wall. They were not here when the factory was originally built. These two 
uh, access tubes, access holes, they were not at all here for that. They're new, lined and everything. What a beautiful building. What construction went into this? The late 19th century. And behind the tree here are the two holes. And here are the platforms for the boilers. This was all pillars from up here. Have the burners and the boilers up here. Because here are the platforms. And I'm standing on another one. special about this building. <laughs> Here are the platforms. These are the platforms of the boilers. There are the holes. And here are the platforms. Standing on one. There's one over there underneath this rubble. It would be hard to say that this building would be here for a long time. The coal would come in here, be stored. Well, it was come off. On the other side up here is right outside here is where the slide from the mountain comes down. The, uh, the conveyor belt cart comes down the mountain out here would have gone in over here, unloaded fuel here, coal, have the burners and the boilers up here. All makes sense, except why would you build a huge cooling tower slightly off site without modernizing the plant? And the wall here in the end, where the old cooling tower was, clearly is no more. Which makes looking for an access to it rather hard. Just for comparison, would have been interesting to see how large the original access holes were to the original water tower, cooling towers. I wanted to take the time to go for one final look and see if I could find any of the old attachments to the old cooling towers or possibly any technical tunnels pointing in the direction of the henge and the mountain. That's the basement or the main hall would be in here.
how ornate this is. This is one of the original holes that was here for decoration. Lighting, window. And here in the rubble is styrofoam. Styrofoam, to my knowledge, was not invented until after the war. So if I go down here, can I come back up? Well, probably. Where's the rubble that looks the most forgiving? <laughs> wow. This is the power plant. What's left of it? Bloody jacuzzi in here. Sort of annoys me, to be quite honest. Five, six, seven, four, three, two, one. Pillars are numbered. I'm looking for access of tunnels. I mean, look at how ornate just these little walls were. But I'm not finding any tunnels. I actually see a wood ceiling and a piece of wood hanging right over my head. That sort of looks like it's about to give way. Octagon tile here. This was no doubt a beautiful building back in its heyday. No tunnels. Well, there is an underground, but there's no tunnel. I don't know what it is, but I know what it isn't. Here's the pipe. There's a hole. And there's a pipe more underneath me, there's not. Something came through that hole, about the same size as the other two holes. And here is one pipe. And there it looks like in stands for the pipe there to turn. This could have been one of the pipes for the old cooling tower back in the day. Looks like I'm in the bathroom again. There's an underground. But this is not really tunnels. You remember last time I was here, there's a beautiful ornate round corner right here that has been torn down. 
they are actively working right now to tear down these remains. And that is a god awful shame. I understand it can't be salvaged, but still. And we are high above the munitions plant and the power plant and you start seeing more munition bunkers built into the side of the mountain and for the first time here closed off but if you look at the original opening there would have been a rail taking the heavy product in and storing them here. So this is ammunition storage. And I have just acquired the list of what the Mulca dynamite plant actually produced. And again, a little further up, another one, identical. Basically just a room, munition storage, straightforward. And the third one, very well sunken into the mountain, very well camouflaged. And continuing up from the road, there's another munition storage. That's a rather large indent in the woods. It looks bigger than the others. And the interesting thing is there's bits and pieces lying around, so I don't know if it's been demolished as well as some of them were. Hard to say what happened to it. The floor appears to have been broken up. Try to go through here. This whole mountain looks like there's a storage underneath it. Or this would have been where they had placed the munitions and then blown it up because it has been exploded. And this was just simply the way in and out because there's no there's no way into this dirt mound. This is almost close to what we've seen in uh, Jutebuk, where dirt mounds literally protected production facility or building inside that is no longer there. And obviously, given the remnants on the ground, something was here that was demolished. I just find it strange that this is not hollow. Now this is rather interesting and I'll tell you why. You remember the small bunkers where you had to drive in? You drive through and have these small storages I showed you last time I was here. Well, here's three more, but they are a lot larger. I would imagine here would be three very large munition storages or deposits where you could drive your trucks in here. And then should be an opening coming up to my left. There is. These are the large munition storages. 
just like the small ones. Obviously, the doors are gone. And this is exactly what it is. A very large munition storage hidden in a dirt mound in a forest maybe a kilometer's drive from the factory where the munition was produced ventilation which sticks out on the roof I imagine the floor here would have been a lot lower because now it's full of sand but this is just one big reinforced room to store munitions and then there's at least three of them from what I can see I don't know how it ended up don't know how it ended up being full of sand there'll be one door there another one here And if there was an accidental detonation, it would come straight into this hillside. Nothing strange or sinister about this. This is just pure and simple munition storage. Ease of access, where the smaller ones closer to the actual factory could very easily just have been for detonators, explosives, small arms munition, that was produced here or the explosives needed more frequently and therefore deposited there just for the basic ease of logistics very straightforward very simple drive-in munition storage and there's three of these and up there on top is the air intake or ventilation There's the entrance to the one we were just in. And then here is the next one. Ventilation on top. I will be very surprised if it is not exactly identical. You can see the access roads here. Well, they're covered with dirt, but the cement slabs underneath are the German roads. Straightforward slabs of cast cement stone and yep see if there's an accident the blast would simply just deflect into the mound of dirt here just one room where uh, hmm. Well, I knew the floor was... All right, so there's the room. And then there's your two steps down to what somebody have decided to turn into a hole. I do not understand why there's a hollow floor here. There's an underground. Couldn't understand why there would be an underground to munition storage two-story munition storage seems strange honestly and there's no space it doesn't seem like a hollow floor there's nothing there it is just a well, there was a subfloor where they painted the wall down there. There could be a, a second story underneath. I couldn't imagine why, but it's possible, of course. And see where the doors would have closed. Hinges.
electrical or ventilation, I'm not sure. You know what? This looks like a drill core. Look like somebody's been drilling. And this is a bit of a drill core. I do not see why anybody would want to drill down, but again again, everybody's looking for something out here. Down here below. You see the small bunkers, munition storages, with a much smaller driving entrance into the one we saw last time. And a little bit around the corner, it's a nice series of smaller munition manufacturing locations, I would think. Could also be storage. They're camouflaged and they are Clamouflage, and they are just up the road from the smaller munition storage dump. You can literally see these smaller buildings, small rooms, and then right here you have the first driveway into the small storage that we saw last time. Same principle as the bigger munition storage bunkers. Closer to the factory, absolutely. Which makes a lot more sense if this is stuff that is either sensitive or there is a more frequent turnaround. Or it needs to be used more often, plain and simple. There's two of these, and this is exactly what there is. Just a room, a large room with ventilation. And I found the original guardhouse, which is hiding on this side of the road, leading into where the Malka is, and the original guardhouse, which is there. Literally just a little old gatehouse. Nothing strange about this. Cement pillar sitting in there. You have the house here. That leads down to the water. There's been a hole in the wall here. From this window, you would literally be able to see the axis of the plant coming and going. This does look like stands for a rail, but I haven't found any others in these two. Hi, my name is Tino Strokeman, and this is my YouTube channel. I hope you enjoy history and military history as much as I love bringing it to you. And if you want to see more of the photos and documents I've used for these episodes, documentation and so on, you can go to lostbattlefields.com. And if you feel like helping me out traveling around the world to some of these far-flung locations like Van Allen Brown's first test stand behind me, or Deepness nuclear reactor down there, or the Magical Line over there, you can donate on PayPal, uh, protection at serviceint.com. It'll be right here and it is also on lostbattlefields.com. You absolutely don't have to, but I appreciate any help and I love all you guys for all the support you've shown me because history is important. We all know that and I'm going to bring it to you.